Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I am Dr. Ghulam Nabi Maimon, Consultant Anesthetist, Department of Anesthesia, Prince Mohammed bin Abdul Aziz Hospital, Riyadh. I will present today a cervical plexus block. So, uh, my presentation will comprise history of cervical plexus block, anatomy of the cervical plexus, Indication of the cervical plexus block, cervical plexus blocks, uh, techniques, and uh, complication of cervical plexus block. And history, the first block of uh, cervical plexus on history and record is given by William Stewart Halstead. Uh, he was born in 1842, 1852 and he died in September 1922. He is the father of modern American surgery. And uh, first, the date of first blog on the record is 1884. This is the same year when this uh, Viennese uh, Carter Kohler introduced the drug cocaine, first time in the history of anesthesia. And he presented a lecture and paper on New York in 1884, August, same year, one month before this blog. And after one month, this uh, ST ward, William ST ward, was giving to the cervical plexus block successfully. And he, he almost blocked all the nerves of the body. And uh, he's father of American, modern American surgery. And this was the same year when Sigmund Freud gives his uh, psychoanalysis theory by the same drug, 18. 84 and Carl Kohler presented in eye surgery and this William Stewart, William, William Stewart Hasted used in the one month after the introduction of the local anesthesia cocaine. And the second point is the presentation of paper by copies in Germany in 1912. And then 1904, Hidden described the lateral approach and by this way the Block was introduced all over the world and people were using uh, extensively because general anesthesia was not safe in those days. Uh, anatomy of cervical plexus block, if you describe the anatomy of, if you see the diagram, this is showing the complete picture of the anterior and posterior MI. Anterior MI are the main uh, point of our discussion because these plexus are formed from the anterior MI. Uh, cervical, brachial, and even uh, lumbar and sacral uh, blocks are derived, uh, are derived from uh, anterior MI. So, uh, in, uh, in cervical uh, plexus, there are four important cutaneous nerves which supplies neck, posterior up to the occiput, and mastoid process and ear. As their names indicate, the first nerve is lesser occipital nerve, the second nerve is greater auricular nerve, transfer cervical nerve, and supraclavicular nerve. The C1 has no, no skin supply. It supplies only two muscles, and these muscles are also through the, uh, through the vagus, uh, sorry, the 12th cranial nerve. So C1 has no cutaneous and no, 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 distribution. It comes through the hypoglycer and uh, supplies the two small muscles, you know, higher and thyroid. And then also gives uh, handle or loop to the uh, anxious cervical. So there are four nerves and there are six uh, muscular deep nerves which are supplied the important muscles of the neck from this plexus. So this is the anatomical real distribution. We can find how the nerves are moving uh, anatomically. So we have four cutaneous uh, nerve from C1 to 4, and C1 has no cutaneous prime. So these all four cutaneous nerves are derived from C2, 3, and 4 from three cranial, three cervical nerves. The first nerve is lesser occipital, 
it is considered as a direct branch from C2, but some authority says C3 tweaks are supplied to this nerve. And then greater auricular nerve, which supplies, as the name indicates, and transfers for vehicle. We will describe in next slide in detail. The deep muscular muscle, uh, which are supplied by the deeper branches, because these uh, all plexus is at the uh, anterior border, posterior border of the sternocleidomastite and cutaneous, and there are deep fibers given by the, the same nerves. So, we can describe all. C1 innervates through cranial nerve to have hypoglossal to thyrohyoid muscle and genohyoid muscle. These are suprahyoid muscle and from one is from thyroid to hyoid bone, very small muscle between thyro, thyroid bone and hyoid bone. And genohyoid is second muscle which is between the mandible and hyoid bone. These are supplied by through the hypoglossal nerve which supplies the tongue. It's 12th cranial. So C1 has a, actually there's no nerve about C, uh, like C1. There's no cutaneous and there's no nerve at all. It, it, these are fibers by H aching through the cranial nerve. Then there is a second part which is more important is ansa cervicalis. It's a handle or loop or necklace. Different names are given in the record. So upper uh, loop is given by the C1 and uh, which is through the hypoglycer of course and then then down so from C2 to C3 there is a lower lower uh, handle and they both unite to give branches to different muscles of the neck which are uh, known as strep muscles and uh, are inferior hyoid muscles so the third muscle is the sternohyoid from sternum to the hyoid. It's a long muscle which is spread from sternum to the hyoid bone. The fourth muscle is omohyoid which has two belly, superior and inferior belly. Superior belly is supplied by the, uh, by the upper handle of the ansa cervicalis and inferior belly is supplied by the inferior head. So this is one muscle which has no, two nerves but we count as a one one muscular supply. The fifth is sternohyoid muscle, sternothyroid muscle, because from sternum to thyroid, these are inferior, inferior, inferior hyoid muscle. So these are five muscle, and the sixth muscle is diaphragm, which is supplied by the phrenic nerve, C2, 3, C3, 4, 5 muscle, which is a mix uh, motor and spine, sensory nerve. We'll describe each in detail. This is the distribution area of the skin supplied by the cervical plexus, C234. And the, if in words I describe its area blocked by this plexus, anterior shoulder, uh, acromoclavicular joint, clavicle, anterior neck, thyroid, carotid, mastoid, and auricle in your ear. Uh, now, commun communicating branches with cranial nerves are C1 through cranial hypoglycyl, kinohyoid, thyrohyoid muscle, C5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And these nerves go up from 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, go up in the cranium and they join the accessory nerve which comes, fiber which comes from the nucleus ambiguous and uh, which is known as cranial part of the uh, accessory nerve, 11th nerve cranial, and supplies the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. There is also a spinal part, which is C2, C3, supplies the trapezius, which is away from the brachial plexus. And then C1, C2 through vagus to laryngeal and pharyngeal muscles are supplied by the vagus nerve, and C2, carried by C1, C2. So these are not exactly nerves available, but they, uh, this is known as the hitchhiking. So the nerves, fiber carried by the other nerves, which are carrying nerves. And then deep uh, muscular branches, which is also mentioned where the longus coli and longus capitis, capitis are supplied from segmental nerve C2 to C5. C3, C4 also gives branches to the escalene and levator escapuli. And these muscles are derived from the 
anterior and posterior tuberculosis are the inter uh, of the vertebra, transverse process of the cervical vertebra, and it is segment level received branches from C34. And liver triscapoli and escaline. And then there are small muscles which are supplied, which, don't, which are not worthy of mention. So cranial nerve supplies, three cranial nerve supplies, a different muscle. Now coming to the first nerve, cutaneous nerve, which is important to our cervical plexus block, is lesser occipital nerve. You can see in the diagram the nerve is passing upward from the mid sternoclavicular muscle point up to the occiput and uh, it supplies the posterior and later aspect of the scalp along with the greater auricular nerve provides sensation to the posterior aspect of ear also. The second nerve which is a greater auricular nerve is the name indicates it supplies the ear it has two branches, anterior and posterior. Anterior you know, it's skin supplying the anterior surface of the ear and skin supplying the uh, parotid gland. And there, there the posterior branch which uh, which goes behind the ear lobule and supplies the mastoid process and posterior aspect of the ear. These two nerves are ascending branches. We can say the cervical plexus has three types of ascending, descending and transfer. So these two are ascending. One is transfer cervical nerve, which supplies the uh, anterior triangle of the neck, skin of the anterior triangle of the neck with some fiber from the greater auricular nerve, as you can see from the diagram. Uh, lateral aspect of the neck, mostly anterior triangle. And if we go to the fourth branch, which is descending, known as supraclavicular nerve, the root value is C34. It comes down, it is clear from the diagram, it has three branches, medial, intermediate, and lateral branch. Medial branch supplies skin over clavicle from the sternoclavicular joint to the midclavicle. Intermediate branch innervates clavicle and skin from the superior aspect of pectoral major out to the anterior deltoid. And lateral branch innervates distal clavicle and skin supplying the superior and posterior aspect of deltoid all supply up to second rib. So acromoclavicular joint and the shoulder is uh, supplied by the uh, supraclavicular nerve. Oh, indication of uh, cervical plexus block are carotid endectomy. This is the requirement of uh, surgery. The, the, the surgeon wants patient to be awake to monitor the progress of surgery. And uh, the yeah, second is lymph node dissection in the neck anywhere which comes under the area of cervical plexus. Shoulder surgery, it needs a supplementer to supplement brachial plexus. To block the superficial brachial plexus, superficial cervical plexus plus on the whole or supply the supraclavicular nerve alone. Uh, otherwise, this is painful. You cannot do surgery. And there's another nerve which should be blocked is suprascapular nerve and we can do surgery with the with the brachial plexus supraclavicular. Then tracheostomy by needs bilateral uh, cervical plexus block and uh, uh, blocking the whole uh, 10 cc uh, on this side of the posterior border, 10 cc on the other side of the posterior border, bilateral block, it will cover whole the uh, anterior triangle on both sides. Or we can block the, the, the transverse cervical as alone on the anterior border, just supply the anterior border, 10 ml, uh, this side and 10 ml on this side. 5 ml up, 5 ml down mid, mid uh, mid uh, uh, esternocleidomastoid point. The thyroidectomy and parathyroidectomy can be performed with this block by blocking both sides with superficial cervical plexus block. And uh, passing center line is a painful procedure in a weak patient. It should be done under cervical plexus block, which is highly recommended. Even subclavian root, we can use this block. There are some chronic um, pain condition like cervicogenic headache which can 
help. This pullout can help to relieve these headaches. Injuries to the ear, neck, clavicular region, auricular, clavicular fracture, and acromoclavicular dislocation can be performed. All energies are provided by the by this block. Now there are three types of superficial, intermediate, and deep, depending on the location where we block the nerves. The most important point of discussion today and the understanding of the cervical plexus block is the understanding of the neck fascia. Uh, we must understand the neck fascia, otherwise we can culminate in a blunder or a disaster. And if you understand the neck fascia, it is a very simple. It becomes very simple, and very cheap, very easy, and very understandable block. So I will describe two, three pictures, two, three diagrams for neck fascia, giving more emphasis on facial understanding than on other 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 aspects of the anatomy. So you can see in diagram there is a skin around the all around the neck and there's a yellow color uh, uh, fat tissue which also contains the platys muscle anteriorly and there is green investing fascia uh, we say it investing fascia because it invests the two muscle posture it invests the trapezius and anteriorly it invests the sternocleidomastite this is most important uh, fascia to understand the cervical plexus and then inside there is a, a peritracheal perivertebral fascia which invades the bone, means cervical vertebra, and muscles around it. You can say paravertebral muscle, you can say erector spiny posteriorly, and uh, all muscles, uh, scalene and levator, and muscles of the neck, which are invested in the perivertebral fascia. And then there is a pretracheal fascia which invades uh, thyroid and uh, trachea and uh, esophagus. Uh, esophagus. And the fourth, uh, which is not mentioned in this diagram, is the vascular fascia. I give it named vascular fascia <laughs> as we are discussing as fascias. Or this is a carotid sheath. So this contains the internal jugular vein, carotid artery, and vagus nerve. Uh, to, so, so we have to understand when we out when we are out of the investing fascia, this is superficial under the skin. When we are inside the fascia, we can block. We will discuss this in the second picture. This is the theoretical picture, which does not contain the skin and fade directly. There is a green outer uh, encircling line or fascia. You can see it is anteriorly covering the sternocleidomastoid and posteriorly covering the trapezius. So well, this is very important. And then there is the vertebral fascia which is covering the um, bony part and the muscular part of the muscles around the bones. This is very vertebral. And then peritracheal fascia which is again covering the thyroid, trachea, and esophagus, and recurrent laryngeal nerve. And there's again gerodrish. So four fascias uh, have different planes where the drug can move easily. And this is the uh, diagram to understand the brachial plexus. Uh, it's very clear from here. If we want to go superficial cervical plexus block, on the right of my hand there's a nerve only penetrating the skin and in separateness tissue, okay. superficial, very superficial. If the same plane we we penetrate second uh, pop of investing fascia, we are blocking the intermediate. If we go to the transverse process in the same area, uh, and uh, we can reach the nerve root at the transfer process, and we can say it is a T block. This is the uh, diagram given by New York Society of Regional Anesthesia, which is a uh, good authority to discuss this issue. And in this diagram, it's very clear message. If you see it, the, uh, sorry, if you see it, uh, when the, when the, when the block is uh, out of the investing fascia, subcutaneously only, it is superficial. 
when we penetrate the investing fascia it is intermediate when we reach the transverse process between the interescalene in the interescalene group this is deep so it clearly indicates what is mean by superficial intermediate and deep uh, superficial cervical plexus block technique is the patient position is so point facing face uh, away from the block side or maybe sitting position with back support landmarks are esternocleidomastoid muscle posterior border mid mid uh, muscular point and uh, the the local anesthetic solution recommended is 10 ml the concentration may be 0.25% and 0.5% 0.5 by 1% is enough to block the small nerves which are supporting us and very thin nerve no need to give 0.5% but we we can use 0.5% also sometimes we are using the bilateral block so maybe we need to use the lower concentration so block is generally performed is starting at the midpoint posterior border of sternocleidomastoid may start 5 ml up and 5 ml down over it's enough to block the all the four nerves of the cervical plexus and uh, except some uh, uh, except some uh, anatomical variation in which the transverse cervical is coming between the muscle of the muscle mass of the uh, sternocleidomastoid which is rare uh, rare but when we are uh, planning the surgery uh, so we can take care of these nerve especially one by one for example if we are uh, doing the surgery at mastoid or occipit we can take care of the lesser occipital or if we are going behind the ear greater auricular will take care of this nerve or we are going to the thyroid and uh, parathyroid so we take more care of this transverse cervical or if we are going down to block the said do surgery on the clavicle or the supraclavicular fossa then we take more care of this nerve so uh, so every nerve should be taken care uh, in a separate way depending on the site of surgery on the whole uh, superficial plexus block superficial cervical plexus block can be blocked easily at this level giving 5 ml upward and 5 and mill down it uh, blocks all the nerve uh, supplying the neck all four nerves and this is a diagram showing the area and the how to move the nerve how to move the syringe from up and down and to block the nerves and the intermediate cervical plexus block uh, position is same so point facing away from the block side or sitting position with the uh, back support and we can do it landmark or same posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid level of external jugular vein local anesthetic is injected uh, posterior border or inner border of the investing layer if we, uh, we are using ultrasound it's uh, it's better or it's mandatory in this block to use the ultrasound uh, if available and uh, we can go in plane and out of plane technique and in plane technique we put the uh, ultrasound at cs not to work c6 level and uh, level is our mid clavicular mid uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle level and just uh, going from posteriorly border of the intermediate muscle and depositing 10 ml 5 to 15 ml uh, deep to the sternocleidomastoid uh, mastoid in out of plane technique we can go through the outer layer of the investing fascia then pierce the muscle sternocleidomastoid mastoid and then penetrate the investing fascia deeper layer which is investing the sternocleidomastoid mastoid just after passing the inter, the fascia we can inject an ml and ultrasound we can see this plexus easily but uh, we can if we give below the sternocleidomastoid like we are using the sartorial subsartorial uh, block of our femoral and inject that drug it will reach the nerves so the landmarks are same the position is same 
the solution i recommend for intermediate is 0.5 percent because it needs to disperse in the deeper planes and uh, 10 ml is enough 15 ml may cause complication to the to dissipate or to uh, solution can diffuse in deeper planes which are not required but depends on the choice from 5 ml to 15 ml can be used to block these nerves. Blocking these nerves, 5 ml is enough but giving 10 ml helps to uh, uh, move the drug in deeper planes and 0.5% uh, is given to have a because the nerves inside are thick in, in superficial uh, block the nerves are cutaneous and they are they are very thin and in the intermediate level the nerves are thick and in the plex it is plexus so it's better to give 0.5 percent in ml and the total volume given uh, if we give at one time superficial and deep uh, it's uh, 20 ml uh, 10 ml 0.25 percent 25 milligram and uh, 0.5 percent 10 ml means 50 milligram 75 which is well below the level of uh, therapeutic dose and then the deep uh, cervical plexus block which can be given a sitting and uh, supine position same position for superficial and intermediate and deep uh, landmark is the different in this which is mistide process or transfer process of C234 local anesthetic is injected C3 to 4 ml 3 ml at each level 3 sides C2 level, C2 transfer process, C3 transfer process, C4 transfer process. Ultrasound guide, uh, guidance is uh, very important. RM. I will say it is mandatory and it increases the safety. And this is like a parabolic broad block or, and we'll discuss in detail. So this is a diagram showing the uh, C4 vertebra transfer process, anterior lip and posterior lip and this nerve root level so three nerve root are blocks c234 and uh, three injections are given at three levels a uh, three ml or four ml and uh, the most important point to describe here we are very near to the intervertebral artery which is passing in the in the intervertebral foramen towards the brain and injecting one cc or one one ml in the in the uh, vertebral artery can cause disaster and uh, this can uh, the nerve can go the solution can go directly by pressure to the epidural space it can go to the spinal intradural and uh, paravertebral uh, but uh, ultrasound make it more safer now complication of uh, cervical plexus block include uh, Superficial uh, cervical plex block is safest and has minimal complication. It can be used bilaterally safely. It is simple and effective technique. It effectively block all four cutaneous nerves. Uh, so the, the, the only complication of superficial cervical block are infection, which needs meticulous uh, um, sterile technique. And then uh, if the patient is on anticoagulant, can cause hematoma, which is subcutaneous, and both are manageable. Middle cervical plexus block has minimal complication, and uh, the deep cervical plexus has a number of complications. As in, I will describe all the complications in one go for all the blocks. Number one is infection can occur in all three. Sterile technique is mandatory. And uh, the second is hematoma formation, which can occur in anticoagulation calculated patient in superficial, intermediate, and deep block. And it can cause uh, hematoma formation can be caused by accidental arterial puncture, which could be vertebral artery or the common uh, internal uh, sorry internal carotid or any branch of the arteries. So we must take care of these uh, arteries and uh, before injecting any volume we should uh, aspirate and uh, we should use the color doppler in cases of uh, 
ultrasound to stay away from the vessels. Phrenic nerve blockage is common in deep because we are intending, this is our intention to block C4 which is the main part of the phrenic nerve. So in deep block it is always blocked and can occur in intermediate block but not in the superficial block. So in intermediate depends on the volume and concentration if we use 15 ml and we are near to the C4, it can reach C4 and can block 5, C3, C4, 5. Uh, bilateral deep and intermediate cervical plexus blocks are not advised. Intravascular injection can occur in carotid and vertebral artery. A spinal and epidural spread can occur in deep, not in superficial. Uh, and even in intermediate, it is not uh, supposed to occur. Vagus and recurrent lesion nerve may block because the drug can dissipate in the vagus nerve and to recur laryngeal nerve. Horner syndrome can occur due to sympathetic block due to ischemic ganglia block. Thank you very much.